Hello everyone, welcome back to another VTool VR tutorial. Today I'll be talking briefly on the EF24's jamming module and a few of the extra bells and whistles that come along with it. Now this video was made at the request of a few people who left a comment on the last video that went over the jammer and how to use it in the other jets. As always, if there's something you want to see, just leave a comment and I might make a video on it. Over here you have the transmitter settings. You can click through the different ones by just using the touch screen here. And you can adjust the power with these knobs here. First thing I'll show is how to use the TSD. So what you do is you'll soy this. You'll click on a target, select an option, TSD, transmit. And now we are giving a noise jam on the medium on the medium band to that target. We can also select this one, bring it over, TSD, transmit, and now we're jamming that radar site with noise on the medium band. Another way of selecting a target to jam is with the TGP over here. I'm zoomed in all the way on this same site. I'll go over here and I'll click TGP to take it as a source and transmit. So now, as you can see on the TSD, I am jamming at this source. The disadvantage of using the TGP is that you can only jam what it's pointing at. So you can't jam uh, multiple targets at one time. But an advantage is, is that if you move the TGP, as you can see here on the TSD, it will move where you're jamming. So you can, in theory, just jam off into oblivion with the TGP. Now for GPS targeting, I've acquired two targets using the TGP. They're both visible up here and in front of me here. All I'll have to do is go and select GPS and hit transmit. And it will transmit and jam whichever one you have selected in green. Take another one, we'll switch on to another one. New one here, GPS, transmit. And now you can see that we are jamming two independent sources. You can jam up to as many GPS targets at a time as you have room for here. One thing that's worth mentioning here is the difference between medium, high, and low band. Now all the other jets that have access to the jamming pod have access to medium and high band jamming. The EF24, however, is unique in that it has access to the low band jamming. The only other vehicle that has access to low band jamming is the GECM truck. So what they're used for here is the low band is used for comms and GPS, meaning that if you target another aircraft and blast it with low noise, low band noise, it will jam its communications and GPS, making it harder for it to communicate with its team and affecting its GPS. With medium band, you can jam aircraft and SAM radars. With high band, you can jam AAA radars, missile warning trucks, and AIM-120 internal radars. So once the AIM-120 goes pitbull, you can select it with your TSD and give it a high band noise jam and potentially break its lock with you. In addition to the EF-24 being unique in that it has access to low band jamming, it also has access to two modes that other jets don't have access to. First being DFRM, which basically copies an incoming radar scan, modifies it, and then transmits it back to the source at a higher power. The result of this is your jammer will effectively modify the radar scan and move it away from your aircraft, allowing you to break radar lock. The only option you have is TSD for this. So over here, you click SOY, select a radar, press TSD, and you can transmit. Now if that radar scan were locked onto me, this would make it easier to break the radar lock. In addition, we also have access to SAS mode. It works a lot like DFRM, in which it'll take a signal that's coming in, modify it, and send it back. But what this one does is it modifies a threat radar signal in order to appear as a different aircraft. So when you're in SAS mode, again, it only takes DSD, you select the one you want, but then you go to the SAS button here that'll appear, and you choose what you want to show up as. So I want to show up as an AB42C, for example. You hit OK, and you will hit Transmit. So now on that radar, it will see me as an AV42. As a quick side note, you can also quickly cycle through your different transmitter modules by switching this setting to Electronic Warfare. You can also see it up on the HUD there as I press the button to cycle through, just like you would cycling through weapons, you can cycle through these different modules. One more thing I'd like to talk about for a minute is the FRAZ module. Now this module is really, really helpful to accompany the jamming module. What it is, is it is a 360 degree view of all of the radar pings and radar scans that you're receiving. And it's a nice way of quickly and effectively interacting with them, jamming them, and getting data. For example, if we go to the E4 here, you can just mouse over it, and you can see it's bearing from you 
the frequency that you would need to use to jam it based on what it's using and what it's called. And if you just click on it once, it'll automatically go over here into your transmitter to wherever this is selected. So if we select 1B and click on it again, now it's over there. We go back, we can cycle all the way through, go back to 1A. If we click on it again, now we're jamming it. Now of course we can see this is in the low band, both based because of what it says here and because it's below the low bar. I would go over here to band and change it to low in order to effectively jam it. Now seeing the bearing now is 96, it's kind of getting behind me, so I can see my bearing here. This is also a nice way of finding where things are. You can see where it is quickly and then turn until you see it. Now that it's re-entered the view, it's reappeared here and gone back to jamming. Now if we go to 1B here, we can click on this dish site. Let's move our bearing over closer towards it. Now it's available over here. We can click on it and jam it. This is in the medium range, as we see by between being between low and high. We're jamming it with medium, so we are effectively jamming it. And that's about it. Everything that you need to know about the EF24's jammer module and all the extra things that come along with it. As always, if I missed anything, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.